Aloha, I'm Tim Apicella. In today's Moving Hawaii Forward, we will look at the topic that is on the front page of the Star Advertiser almost every day now, how to fund the rail project shortfall. The 2017 state legislature ended the session without coming up with a plan to address Mayor Kirk Cogwell's request to fund $3 billion shortfall for the rail project. His original request was to have the state extend the half percent general excise tax without having an end date. This did not happen. And now voters are saying, why didn't this get done? Where is the leadership to come up with a funding strategy or any kind of funding strategy? Voices on both sides of the rail issue are getting louder. Some say it's time to kill the rail right now. Many others say complete the rail as planned and get moving on it right now. A third group says stop the rail at Middle Street and allow a bus rapid transit system to take commuters into Ala Moana. No matter what position one takes on the rail, one thing most parties can agree on, make a decision. Our guest today has recently submitted an editorial to Honolulu's Civil Beat to address this exact topic. State Representative Bob McDermott represents the voters of District 40, which includes Eva, Eva Beach, Eva Gentry, and Iroquois Point. Representative McDermott also sits on the State Legislative Transportation Committee. Representative McDermott, I want to thank you very much for taking the time and, and joining us on this exact issue. It's, hey, thanks, Tim. Thanks been, for the opportunity. It's been in the paper well, a lot. Well, it has. Uh, <clears throat> where would you like to start? Well, I'm just, just a little <laughs> bit. You, you, you came uh, a legislator in 2013, is that correct? So I have broken time. I was in the 90s uh, for three terms, oh. ran for Congress unsuccessfully, and then uh, was out of office for a decade. And uh, an open seat came up, and some people asked me to run. Now, when a politician says people ask me to run, usually the only person I ask him is the guy in the mirror. Hey, I think you should run. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> but actually, people did ask me to run. So I got back into it. Uh -huh. uh, so I came in in the middle of the rail situation. I wasn't around for the selection of the, the route or the criteria or maglev or steel on steel. So I come in in the middle of it and said, OK, here's your options. I'm glad you clarified that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't. Uh, yeah, uh, no, you came into it in the middle of it. So, so um, before I get to your editorial, I'd just like to have you describe the atmosphere, the political atmosphere over this very, this very issue. I hear it was very contentious. Um, it was very combative in some points. So, and so, just so the, the 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 truth of it is that the House leadership uh, has a uh, personal dislike for Kurt Caldwell, uh, because when Kurt Caldwell was in the House with Calvin Say, he was majority leader. So the people now in charge were on the outs in those days. So what that means is they didn't get their bills heard, they didn't have any influence, they weren't committee chairman. Now those people are in charge. And Calvin Say and his group are out of what's left of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's payback time. And you shouldn't make public policy based on personal likes or dislikes. That's Especially wrong. at the expense of the voters. Yeah, so. really. It's uh, chicken doo-doo, shall we say, chicken mm -hmm. poo stuff. That's a very big, real part of it. Personalities and egos are down there. You, uh, you know, I say you have 76 egomaniacs in that building, and where's the adult supervision? I can assure you if Dan and Noe was alive, we wouldn't have adjourned without a decision. He would have made a phone call and said, you guys get together and figure this out. It's an embarrassment, but we don't have that. Governor Ige is a very nice man, but he is not a leader by nature. He is a creature of the legislature. He started 35 years ago, appointed to the state house, been in the legislature. So he, should, he believes, based on his actions, and what I hear is that the legislature should work their will. Well, we need leadership to step up and say, this is what we need to do, guys. We're going to send a president, House Speaker, myself, the governor. We're going to lock ourselves in a room. We're going to order pizza. And we're not leaving until we figure it out. Real simple. Because each month we delay costs 10 to $15 million in contracts, increased costs that were not. So today, if we could sign a contract, we lock in the cost. We're not signing contracts because we have no money left. We, we ran out of money about two months ago, if you will. So they can't lock in prices. So now the prices are going up. 
10 to 15 million a month, all because of egos and personal dislike. Now, do we have money for progress payments? We have money right now to go to a certain point, yeah, which is okay. close to Middle Street, but beyond that, we can't. We're out. Right. And again, this is a city project, so I'm kind of operating at the 20,000 foot level. I'm not down deep in the, 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 the inertia of it or the guts. The to what extent did your committee get involved with all these, all these topics? So we passed a bill, I think it was a 20 or 30 year extension of GET. It was a good bill. It had some safeguards in for due diligence and things of that nature, you know, monitoring the progress. But it goes to finance, and that's where Sylvia Luke is. And Sylvia Luke and Scott Psyche are the power of the State House. And Sylvia Luke and Jill Takuda are friends. And so Takuda said, We're only going to give you the skim back. And Sylvia Luke said, We'll do a, what it was a one year or two year extension, something like that. So that was going to be. The, the, the skip's ten percent, correct? Skip's ten yeah. percent. Which interesting. I want I want your listeners to hear this. The skim is what a couple hundred million a year for since the project's been in inception, so over ten years. That all goes to the general fund. So let's use a round number. Let's just it's low, but let's say a hundred million. Mm -hmm. Hundred million every year goes to the general fund. That's from Oahu taxpayers paying the GET surcharge. That hundred million, which is a low number, by the way, now is distributed to the entire state. So Oahu is directly subsidizing the neighbor islands. Now we already do that in the general fund budget. Anyway, yeah. anyway, now this is even worse because now we're penalizing Oahu and putting this extra burden on for extra neighbor island subsidies, uh, which is lost on everyone. It's interesting because I'm hearing from folks that live on the Big Island, and uh, they're saying. Why are they taking away um, money that would be dedicated to the island of Hawaii? Well, that's the way they look at it. Yeah, know, that's the way they look at it. Right. So everyone's looking at it a little bit differently. And, and so the neighbor island senators were always supportive of the train because they're getting the slush fund. There's more money for them. But it's the Oahu guys who are getting hammered on it. And so reduce the skim to 1% is what I say. Um, and stop that nonsense, first of all. Well, I want to get to the editorial specifically okay. because when I read it, I was... Um, it's rare that you can get a very clear uh, statements that are not am ambiguous, um, direct to the point, and have a direct message. And that's what I was um, appreciated about your editorial. I may not agree on all the points you made, yeah. but it's, it was a breath of fresh air to see this uh, posted in, in uh, Honolulu Civil Beat. Well, thank you. Um, I was a Marine for eight years, four enlisted and four as an officer. and. Uh, you know, you have a mission, you've got to accomplish it. Uh, that's, of course, that's 100 pounds ago, as many years ago, right? But, <laughs> but you know, this is what we got to do. Yeah. So let's get there. And the, sec the, the dirty secret, Tim, is that this thing is three quarters completed. We got four miles to go, the, the four most expensive miles, but four miles to go to get to Albuana. Okay, there will be a funding mechanism. Stop the nonsense. Stop the bull crap, the kabuki dance, a TAT, a this or that. Look, leave the status quo in place. The sky hasn't fallen. Yeah, despite what some, mentioned your think, that in your, in your some of your editorial. think tech friends say, the sky hasn't fallen. <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm gonna get to funding strategies a, a little bit later the, here. but The sky hasn't yeah. fallen. Finish the damn thing. Oh, and by the way, everybody knows, everybody knows, this is a separate topic, but to make it work, it's got to go from Alamoana another two miles to University of Hawaii. It's got to go there. Otherwise, kids aren't going to take it. They're not going to go to Alamoana. Well, you do know from a planning standpoint that they have to retract back out and then go up to, um, uh, to uh, University of Hawaii. Well, they could go down Kapiolani, too. They could go yeah. out great. But that's, that's, that's an another issue. Story. Another, that's yeah, another story. That's another fight for another time. <laughs> but the, the, that's the plan. Yeah. Everybody knows it's got to go down there. So get to Alamoana. 60% of the folks, there was just a poll done. Um, PRP just did a poll. This is news for your folks because it's not public yet. 60% of the people say, finish the damn thing. As, as planned? Finish it down Moana. Okay, but with an elevated system? Cause yes. I find that really an incredible Well, it's um, like poll. The, the numbers I got were 45% say finish it, 45% 40, say continue on, uh, extend the GT, 49% say stop it. 
Right. Okay. But then, but when you ask, like, okay, okay, well, should we finish down one? Sixty percent say yeah. finish yeah, down I, one. I think most people agree. It's so, how we go about doing that, yeah. which we're going to talk about a little bit. Uh, the challenges for the last four miles. Well, so, well, I'll tell you, as a Republican, so you say that fifty percent who doesn't like it. Ninety percent of that fifty percent are Republicans. My party. Right. right. They're all <laughs> living in white guy too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're the ones who say don't do it. Yeah. But so, Tim, what is the solution? That's the thing, you know, you get all the naysayers, the guys who grumble, bitch, moan, kvetch, and all this nonsense. Oh, take it down, run it at grade, uh, stop it, put jitneys on top of it, make it a bike way. Okay, all right, well, here's the reality. We're three quarters of the way down. Yeah, I, I think a big a big issue is it's not so much the, the concrete and rebar issue. It's how this thing came about and what a lot of people feel were deceptive practices on selling this to not only the state legislature, the city council, but ultimately to the voters. And I think that is now starting to gear or rear its ugly head into this process. I mean, there is a credibility issue here Absolutely. that Hart and the mayor's office is, 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 is having an issue with. In fact, um, you know. Well, you, you did government work, right? Well, I have. And I'm sure your, your, your thing was always uh, under promise and over deliver. Right. Okay, you're going to force me to go right to <laughs> a quote here by former Mayor Willie Brown of San Francisco. Okay, okay. remember, remember yeah, Willie Brown? Yes, yeah, well, and he uh, left office and then he had his own little column in the San Francisco Chronicle. So on July 28, 2013, this is what he said. And I think it applies to Honolulu, to the state of Hawaii, like nobody's business, right. and ultimately to every jurisdiction in the nation. But he said, in the world of civic, civic projects, the first budget is really just a down payment. If people knew the real cost from the start, nothing would ever be approved. He said the idea is to get going, start digging a hole, and make it so big, there's no alternative to coming up with money to fill it in. Well, that's Willie Brown, right? <laughs> well, but that's how this one looks to be, is that, for one thing, rails never start from out in the farmland and come into town. They start from town and work their way out. Yeah. Um, there's a reason for that, I believe. But well, like I said, I wasn't around. No, you weren't around, exactly. So I don't take responsibility for that. Yeah, I, but I think that's <laughs> the issue that is, 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 is causing the quagmire is the credibility of numbers yes. and the credibility of how this thing was sold. Um, let's look at what Mayor Kurt Caldwell said when he first pitched this idea okay. to the legislature in um, February 1st, 2017. He said, I think we're having a harder time than two years ago, and it's all based on the fact there's no trust. The numbers given have changed dramatically. Well, that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> and history now has proven itself right, because we're now in, in June. And um, well, I tell you what, I, I would support a uh, complete financial audit going back to the beginning of the, the project to, to this fiscal year. Uh, I think that will go a long way to restore public trust. I think that's a great point, and I, I wanted to ask you about that. That's yeah, a great, great point. I, I think also you would need also a, uh, a management audit, too, because, as you know, they're two specific different things. But there is no public trust. And I think local people feel, because I'm married to a local girl, and I, so I live in that world, uh, Somebody's making money on this. Somebody's getting rich. Somebody's pockets are being lined. But who, I think the voters who, are now realizing that. Yeah, who is that? Who, who, who's making the money, bro? Yeah. Uh, open the books. Now, Hart does publish their stuff on, on the internet, but nobody reads it. Uh, I think they should be more transparent and in an aggressive way. Advertise it on Facebook once a month. Put your financials out there. And, and this is where we're at. And pay 100 bucks. You can saturate the island on Facebook. Here are the hard financials so people can see. Because they're not going to go to the hard website. Right? So a financial audit. How uh, long would that take? Oh, shit. Sorry. I didn't. That's okay. A uh, year to 18 months, probably. Okay. But that goes against your point that every delay costs. No, no. You did, so you do financial audit from 2016 back to the beginning. Mm-hmm. You keep moving forward. Yeah. That's a financial audit. So you see where the money was spent. Okay. I think what also you have, Tim, is, is if, if Frank Fossey were mayor, um, if a contractor made a mistake, they eat it. They have errors and omissions. It's not happening here. So what we see is contractors make a mistake, we see change orders. Yeah. Because we don't want well, to. that thought, okay. I'm going to go to commercial break. I'm Tim right. Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward. We'll be right back. You can be the greatest. Yes, you can beat the world, you can beat the war, you could 
Talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock. You can move a mountain, you can break rocks. You can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solution. How to make a brighter day? What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Welcome back. I'm Tim Apicella, and this is Moving Hawaii Forward. We're having a discussion about rail shortfall funding and how we get this rail done. And I'm here with Representative Bob McDermott. Before the commercial break, yes, sir. you mentioned an audit. Yes, and sir. Um, I think it's a wonderful idea. And as we said during the break, once and for all, this audit would either silence the opposition or confirm their suspicions. Right. The complete financial audit, and, and you mentioned it, will it take time? Well, it won't stop the progress of the project. So you go from 2016 back to inception, and you identify was there misfeasance, malfeasance, uh, incompetence, all these things, and you, you just line item because there are people who think there's theft going on. Literally, I, I saw Randy Roth, I think, on this with Kali'i Akina. Called it a fraud. Fraud. That's a legal term. It means theft. Yeah, and he was serious about it. So he believes that there's theft going on. So if a guy of his stature believes there's theft going on, then we should have a financial audit. And I'm happy because, you know, I didn't steal anything. Let's see what the heck's going on. Right. Then the other one is the management audit. That identifies processes and workflow of a major construction project that, quite frankly, we don't have the expertise in. We were joking off screen that the biggest project we ever built was a bridge over IA stream, right? So, of course, there's a learning curve, and of course, there are things that we're doing that probably uh, weren't done right, certainly in the beginning. I think the new guy, uh, Murthy, uh, knows what he's doing. Uh, but Grabowskis, obviously, why would we hire a guy who's famous for the big dig? Well, I guess he had experience, but the experience wasn't the best, right? Because the big dig was, was a disaster. <laughs> was a big dig of it was money. A big disaster. <laughs> well, it was, it was Mary or Willie Brown's point about exactly. digging a big hole yeah. and just <laughs> and filling it in with money, you know? So and to finish it, yeah. But he, you know, he he had some experience, but uh, there's not a lot of guys who do these projects. But we're I hear Murphy. Well, is a good not guy. only maybe financial shenanigans, but I think. Again, the timing of this, this inertia is finally rolling up to the front of voters' noses, and that is, you know, first, um, Mayor Hanneman, you know, basically promised new jobs. We're going to have 10,000 new jobs. Well, barely we have 978 or not even 1,000 new jobs, and a lot of those have been, you know, from people from the mainland. They're not necessarily local jobs. So, right. you know, promise number one didn't, wasn't fulfilled. Promise number two is, okay, we're going to have ridership. And that is a promise that is still is a glaring, glaring. Um, There's nobody riding nothing right now. <laughs> well, okay, good point. But I think the projections of ridership is a sore. Is it's just a sore scab on 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 this whole project. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. And then we said, okay, well, if it's not new jobs, if it's not you know easing congestion the way we think it's going to be, then let's let's find a new reason. Oh, it's it's TOD, the Transportation Oriented Developments, and the uh, the, the prospect of um, affordable housing. Mm. You're also on the Housing Commission uh, yes. committee, right? Yeah. And I don't know if this comes into your committee or not, but this promise of TODs is 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 way oversold. Well, let's talk about that for a minute, if you will. So you asked the mayor and my colleague Gene Ward from Waikai says, "Why aren't we selling the development rights? We're selling the well." And the mayor's response is, "Well, we don't own the land," which is true. Uh, there's a way around that. You can sell uh, transit-oriented development rights. So you break it up into zones, and you sell the rights in those zones. The city council would have to decide what they want in particular zones, right? So if you want an apartment building, say, in Evil Lay, I'll sell you the development rights to a 30-story apartment building in Evil Lay Transit Zone 1. Okay, I'm going to sell you those rights. You don't own any land yet. You don't have to own any land. It's like selling the air rights. It's an option. Yeah. It's selling the air rights above your house. Right. right. Uh, you're familiar with that. Most people aren't. But you, you sell this option to develop. 
So now the city can get revenue. So I own the option to develop this housing apartment. Now you own a grocery store down there. I come to you, I say, look, let's do something together. I own the option and we make business. Right, right now they're not doing that. That's creative, that's thinking out of the box, selling these TOD rights. We can do that now. I will tell you, I know that the, the next area that's gonna be built up is uh, the Kalihi Corridor, Evole. Kakaako, the explosion of growth over there is due to the train because that's the end point, but also we didn't capture anything benefiting the state. So the state increase, or the city increased the value of these properties with this line, and because it's HDDA and it's in the state corridor, we didn't charge any um, TOD rights fees. Right. We didn't capture it. So that well, explosion. And, that's, and that goes to why uh, developers love TODs, because they think, A, I'm going to get some kind of either explicit or implicit subsidy, and B, when I want to construct this thing, I expect some leniency on my permit process. Well, yeah. And so, you know, that's an expectation developers go in. Yeah, there's a give and take on that. But right. it's certainly not necessarily profitable to the city or the state when it comes to these things. Well, so, so far they haven't captured anything. Right, exactly. So, so your point is well taken. They, they haven't realized the revenue available to them in this TOD development. And that's just because they think inside the box. But if you look at that corridor, Kalihi all the way to Waipahu, it is dilapidated where the train runs. I mean, I think I live out on the west side, so I'm looking at Waipahu, the poo -poos. You have a 1962 strip mall that runs basically the whole damn way, and then you have these three-story walk-ups. In 20 years, they'll all be gone. Right. They'll be raised. And where those three-story walk-ups are a half mile from the ocean, they'll be 10-story 10, 10 high-rises. Best and highest use. With ocean views, right. and young people will be able to afford condominiums where they can build equity, uh, to buy an entry-level condo to build equity, so someday they can buy a home. In East Honolulu, like you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to get back to again these things. You know, the, the, what the rail was or wasn't going to do is rolling yeah. to the, the the mentality of the public right now. Yes. And I think the one that sticks out there like a sore thumb is the the ridership projections. Okay. And I want to just take a quick look at um, some numbers here, and see if we can get this thing pulled up. Apparently not. Okay, so such is live TV, just right? Because, <laughs> <laughs> just because uh, I knew that could happen. So what you, what you see here is all the cities here that have rail projects, and as you'll note, the one that has a ridership projection of over 100,000, which is Honolulu at 116,000, we um, we only have a million population. And so you look at San Diego, and you look at San Diego that has over 100,000. You have. Um, uh, Portland over over a hundred thousand, and the bottom line is, you'll say, well, they're double, triple the population. Mm -hmm. So why has Parson Brinkenhoff stuck to this number, not budging off this number, and insisting that we're going to see one hundred sixteen thousand trips per day? So it's this point that I'm making that these projections are just completely unrealistic. Um, let's just take a look at uh, San Juan. Now they had. Uh, estimated 50,000 trips per day. It's taken them 11 years to get to 32,000. At best, our critics that you may or may not know, uh, Panos Prevadoras, uh, a lot of, uh, you know. my buddies. <laughs> yeah, all your friends, good. No, That's they a, are. Right? Good. Well, well then just you just know from Panos' position is, we're at best going to see 50,000, 45 to 50,000 at best, and it could take years to get there. So my point is this. If if we're trying to you know, say that this is a new project going forward, we're asking for an extension of the, the excise tax, mm -hmm. and we're moving forward with transparency and sincerity, then why is these numbers still hanging out there like a bad ornament? Uh, that's a great question. So I can't answer these in particular. Yes. I can't answer these in particular. Uh, but, we compare, so, but if we compare it to San Diego, because they're kind of close, San Diego has triple our population. But San Diego is spread out over literally 100, 100 miles, right, 100 square miles. 80% of our population is in 20% of the land mass, right along the coast, the mm -hmm. corridors. We have a fantastic bus ridership. The bus, by the way, the bus is subsidized, too. They, they don't make money. They no, don't, they don't. They, yeah. But the bus is full. Every, every, you get a rush hour, you can't get a seat. 
we have a different uh, mentality in this state, more of a, a socialist, collectivist mentality under the surface, I think. And people are happy to ride on public transportation. I think you're going to see... It is heavily subsidized by tax dollars. I yeah. mean, the highest transit property is probably King County, Seattle. And the best they got on the fare box is 20 cents to the dollar. And that's one of the highest in the nation. So most transit properties are op operating at zero to five cents recovery. Yeah. So it is all almost 100% subsidized. Yeah. So we have a great bus system, people ride the bus, I think that will converge into ridership of the train. Because people are going from the west side, straight shot downtown. That's where they work, uh, Eva Beach downtown. So someday when it goes to university, my kid's son drives to the University of Hawaii right now. He gets up at 4.30. Yeah, and he has to. But if he could take the train, he wouldn't have to, and they drop him off right on campus, he wouldn't have to worry about parking. Because, you know, once they get down there, those poor people in those neighborhoods, there's no place for parking because all the college kids are parking all over and all the yeah. side streets in Manoa and all over the place. It's a nightmare. Uh, they I talked to a couple of your constituents on the show months ago, and they said, if I don't hit the road by 4.30, forget it. Yeah. If, I, if I hit the road by 6 o'clock, it's a two-hour one way. <laughs> Six, well, if I hit the road at six o'clock, it's going to take me uh, an hour to get to the Pacific Club from Eva Beach. Oh, okay. It has taken me upwards of an hour and 45 minutes on occasion. Mm -hmm. I was late for some important meetings. I mean, it's embarrassing. Yeah. I left my house at six, guys. It's quarter of eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it is embarrassing. Um, but I, I think, you know, all the, 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 the issue is you bring up these points, but the issue is, Okay, here's where we are. We spent, let's say, ten million already, or ten, 10, ten billion. We're going to be at ten billion. We're at ten billion 10, right now. Ten billion sunk in cost. It's gone. Right. You know, we can do the financial management and see the misfeasance or incompetence and stuff, but it, it's gone. So you You're and I. You're saying it's history. That's it's old history. history. You and I are sitting here, and what's before you and I is a project that's three quarters of the way done, and we need to get to Alamoana. What is the way to do that? And I'm simply stating, with all the courage in the world, maintain the status quo. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and, he, and you're saying it requires courage to say that. It does <laughs> require a lot of courage. And I, you know, my hat, I tip my hat to you on that. Nobody else is willing to say it. I'm like, well, it's not that the governor got to come out and say, we've got to finish this damn project, move forward. And the people would follow him. Okay, so we're running out of time. What's the point? What's the financial pain? Where is the bridge too far as far as what this thing uh, costs? Is it, is it 13 billion? Is it, you know, at what point do even you say, I can't support this anymore? The, 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 if you extend the general excise tax, it's never going away. So I don't think of it in terms like you. I think once we built out Moana, if that's where it ends, then that GET has to be used to operate it. Well, I mean, that's a I'm, whole other story. That's well, 100 million a year, right? I'm being honest with yeah, you. Yeah. It's not going away. And these politicians say, run it and then that's it. Then Caldwell's got to figure it out himself. Well, there's no figuring it out. It's not going away because the solution is we raise property taxes. And my folks in Eva Beach, where our home average is about five fifty, six hundred thousand, we're gonna see maybe an eighty dollar or a hundred and eighty dollar increase in our property taxes. You out there in Hawaii Kai, where the homes are two million dollars a piece, are gonna see a thousand dollar a year increase in property taxes. And all of a sudden you're gonna get on the phone. Well, it'd be a lot higher if, if, if it all goes to property tax, twenty eight percent. You know, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be on a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, it's gonna be over eight hundred dollars yeah. extra. Yeah. So we're running out of time. Your homes are seven fifty in Hawaii. They're, no, they're, not. they're a million, yeah. two million for. Just By the way, I live in a condo. So <laughs> okay. I'm, house, so. I'm thinking right. of Gene Ward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all we have for today. I'm Tim Apichel, moving Hawaii forward, and I want to thank Representative McDermott for joining us. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Aloha.